So does 58 years really make a difference? Let's find out. What's going on everyone? I'm Rhett Shaw. Today I'm back at Righteous Guitars in Alpharetta, Georgia to do a head-to-head -head shootout between a 1959 Gibson Les Paul Jr. and a 2017 Gibson Les Paul Jr. So these guitars are siblings separated by about 60 years and today we're going to put them through their paces to find out exactly what's different between them as far as tone and playability. Both of these have pretty flat fretboards. I think the modern custom shop is about a 12 inch radius and from the feel I would say the 59 is about the same. Their neck shapes are similar. The weight is almost identical as far as I can tell. Both made of mahogany all the way through both the same TV yellow color. So really the only difference between these two on paper is about 60 years. Today I'm playing through a 1967 Fender Deluxe Reverb that I've mic'd up with an SM57. So let's jump in and hear the 59 first. <laughs> So I've been playing these guitars for about 45 minutes now and I've gotten a pretty good idea of the differences and similarities between the two of them. So in my right hand I have the 59 and I gotta say I think my favorite thing about this particular guitar is the pickups. They're a little lower output than the 2017 and because of that they're a little more mellow, they're a little more rounded and balanced I think. It just feels really good, especially that neck pickup. The neck pickup on both of these guitars are hotter than the bridge. There is there is an output difference between the neck and the bridge on both guitars. The thing I don't like about the 59 are the frets. This thing needs a little bit of TLC. The guitar, as you can see, is in immaculate condition. I mean, it's, it's really, really nice. Hasn't been played much and uh, it's been taken care of its whole life. There's a little bit of checking on the back of the neck, but the frets are super low. If I was going to shell out the 14 grand for this 59 Les Paul Jr., I would probably refret it. 
I'm a player, I'm not a collector. If I'm gonna spend this much money on a guitar, I'm gonna buy it to play it and gig with it and record with it. On the 2017, this definitely feels like a more modern guitar. It plays well, it feels good right out of the box. I can feel I'm playing better on the 2017, I'm, I'm more comfortable on it, and it's honestly a little more inspiring to play because of that. That being said, it doesn't have that mojo. I've been, I've been thinking about how to describe the thing that the 59 has that the 2017 doesn't have, and the only word that I can come up with is mojo, which is incredibly unscientific. These guitars are essentially identical. Same dimensions, same wood, same type of construction, same pickup layout and everything. But there is a difference. It's just hard to quantify. I think if you could get the 59 to play like the modern guitar with new frets and probably some kind of in-depth setup, maybe it needs a pleck, I don't really know, but if you could get the 59 to play like this guitar, this thing would be unstoppable. I would never put this guitar down. So there you go, 1959 versus 2017. Let me know which guitar you prefer in the comments section down below. Also, if you're in the Atlanta area, be sure to come by and check out Righteous Guitars. These guys are awesome. Their shop is amazing. They have tons of high-end and vintage guitars just like these. Incredibly knowledgeable staff, they're super helpful. I'm a big, big fan of Righteous Guitars. So be sure to come by and show them some love. And thanks to them for letting me come in and play around with these two beautiful instruments today. That's all for now, I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks for watching and remember there is no plan B.